Hi everyone and welcome in this new video. Today we're going to take a shot of self-confidence. We're going to learn something crucial in virtual photography self-development. So if you're new to VP or if you're not new to VP but always on the lookout for improvement, if you keep wondering but how do they do this? Uh, today's video might be for you. So here's three tips to unlock your creativity in virtual photography. Let's go. Okay, first one is curiosity. Embrace your curiosity. Um, this is definitely the first skill you need to train because this is the way you'll improve every other skill. This is true in life. It's also true in virtual photography, of course, because being curious will help you create a background to your own creativity one day. This is not something that will help you now on this shot that you're taking right now. It's too late, but it's something that will give you more references, more models, both on things you like and resonate with you and things that are not organic for you or not really your cup of tea. It's very important to know them all. Yeah, okay, thank you, Shinobi, but how do I train this important skill, huh? Well, you need to watch, uh, you need to observe and you need to question things. How and why are the two questions you need to ask yourself all the time. You want to watch things that are different from what is in your comfort zone. You want to educate yourself in picture making. So for this, you're going to watch photography, of course, but also movies, comics, television commercials, music videos, supermarket pamphlets, whatever but watch. So for instance, you stop a movie and you watch the frame, how it's composed, what it's used for, you know, how and why. Every time someone points a camera at something, they make a decision. So you need to try to understand that choice and what it produces. You like it, use it. You don't put it in your not for me library, but keep an eye on it there because you might need it one day. So for instance, I learned a lot about negative spaces watching Wonka Y movies. By the way, you don't need to know it's called negative space to see what it's used for or if you like it and want to use it in your own practice. You'll know the name later if your curiosity make you more inclined to learn technical aspects. So, you know, see this as your native language actually. You didn't wait to learn grammar rules to speak. But if you want to teach your native language to someone else, you need to understand how it actually works and the grammar words and stuff like this. So curiosity will help you build solid references and uh, some sort of catalog of good and bad ideas that you'll use more or less consciously when you create. It's a muscle that you train by using it, even if you don't know you're using it. All right, number two, uh, think differently. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't mean that you have to be crazy or to reject everything others do or even restrain your own thinking process and reject your own ideas. Quite the opposite. It means that you shouldn't stop at your first idea or your first thought. It's generally the one that most people will have anyways. So what you want is going a step beyond it or 10. Because you train your curiosity like I told you to, you have a lot of ideas printed in your brain from Tarantino, Kubrick, your local supermarket posters, Claude Monet, whatever. So you need to add your own twist to this. You think portrait? Try extreme close-up. You think action shot? Try a step back to put the action in a different perspective. We virtual photographers, we have the luxury to spend as much time in a frame as we want. So don't stop after your original ID. Give it another angle, give it, give it another shot. This might even demonstrate a new aspect of your talent that was here all along and you didn't even know it. Remember that every time you close your photo mode, you lose a whole bunch of shots that you, you didn't take. So, wait, 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 wait. Uh, don't panic, I hear you from here. Hey, but I already spent too much time in a shot. Do not make it a never-ending story. Yeah, 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 I agree. You also need to balance this and to know when to say stop and move on to the next shot. But ideally, um, as often as you can, try to push yourself one step further, your first ID, 
and it will be beneficial every single time believe me if not by discovering a better shot at least for not regretting and losing potential well so basically what i do for this is trying as fast as possible every angle i can on a pose i go close i go far wide angle zoom in up side down side whatever i scan every angle as fast as possible and i stop every time something catch my eye you might lose some shots if you go too fast, but it will also train your eye to catch new things and potential ideas for future shots. So again, curiosity, nourishing your personal library, that's the key here. And number three, come back. Come back, it's very important actually. Developing your creativity, it's like doing a trek in the mountains. Once you're able to do the hardest one, you will still be able to do the easiest ones, right? So once you come back to those easiest ones, you'll start to notice new things in the landscape or, you know, because you don't need to watch your shoes as much as the first time now that you are better at it. So you're more comfortable and you're not afraid to fall, for instance. Well, in virtual photography, you'll have the same feeling. Coming back in a game you know well, but with new ideas and reflexes will be super rewarding. You shot Spider-Man mainly with action shots the first time because the Spider-Man. You did hundreds of portraits of Ellie. Yeah, sure. Oh, that trend of Aloy behind flowers and plants. Oh my god, I hope this ended now because I can't stand them anymore. Sorry, guys. Well, bring this in other games. And bring this landscape skill you learned in Red Dead Redemption 2 in New York. That will be a plus 10 points in your creativity skill tree. Also, forget the game. If you really want to express your own creativity, you need to forget the game itself and focus on what it offers you. What tools are at your disposal in the photo mode? How can you use them? A lot of games, for instance, have bad range in their photo mode. So focus on close-ups or forced perspectives and stuff like this. If you have full freedom thanks to PC tools or a great photo mode, then ask yourself what you can extract from the game's look. But get your mind away from the gameplay and the story of the actual game. If you're able to appropriate yourself the game's aesthetic and combine it with your own ideas, your shots will always be surprising and unexpected. It's a very important aspect of creativity. I love when people are not sure in which game I took a shot. It shows that I was able to make it my own space for a moment. So try that. All right, final bonus tip, find VPRs with creative skills that blow your mind. Even if they shoot mainly that game you hate or that style you never do or that style that you're interested in but you want to improve yourself in, whatever, follow them. Again, observe their shots, try to understand them and keep them in your mind when you shoot. Then do a step further, in any direction actually, except to the back and that's it for today guys uh, i hope you learned something or you agree with me share your thoughts with me in the comment below please put a little like to this video if you want to support me that's the best way you can and uh, drop a comment if you want and i'll see you in the next videos in the meantime keep snapping